Hello everybody. I was gonna put my safety glasses on. Oh y'all know I like to respond uh, with video so people can have uh, contextual information and uh, so I can show my point of view as well say it. So now your brother uh, first of all uh, you, you can't debunk what I'm saying because what I'm saying could be proven. So first thing first how's everyone doing today shalom out there first thing first the brother tried to uh, debunk my 144,000 video that I put out yesterday uh, from the things that I saw he was just trying to say that uh, the 144,000 gotta be today blah 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 this and that so now I don't have uh, my regular Bible because uh, I'm doing I'm, tra I'm transferring information from one Bible to the other one so I got my new revised standard version right but you know, some of the words are going to be off because this is a more uh, modern translation, but it's still going to pretty much say the same. Uh, let's go to Revelations 1 and 4. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. That's the most important thing right there. John the Revelator, who lived during the Roman Empire, was writing seven churches in Asia. Okay, so this is vital to understand what Revelation is about. Verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ was God gave him to show his servants, which must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testified the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all what he saw. So John is writing um, seven churches, what Jesus said, and these things were soon to take place. So everything from Revelation, everything in Revelation, from chapter 1, to chapter 22 was written to seven churches in Asia living in the first century about things that was going to soon take place. So what do we need to take from that? It wasn't written to anybody in America. It was written to the people in Asia. We're reading someone's mail about things that they were going to see in the first century under the Roman Empire. This has nothing to do with America. Nothing at all. John, verse 4 again, John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you. Who was the you? The seven churches. Okay? <laughs> so, you can't debunk what the Bible literally says. It's, he's writing seven churches in Asia about things they were going to shortly see. So, whenever, and, and then look, I mean, he actually goes through it. First of all, he says, John, your brother who share with you in Jesus the persecution and the kingdom and the patience endurance. So, people say, how can we be in the kingdom right now? in 2019 because look at all of this death and all this stuff going on well john was in the kingdom as well as the seven churches they was in the kingdom in the first century and john was sharing their persecution so once again john the revelator was sharing the persecution of the seven churches as well as the other saints in the first century and he still said he was in the kingdom so how can he be in the kingdom going through persecution but you're not in the kingdom going through persecution because y'all say you're in captivity so john was on the isle of patmos in captivity so i, I just want to know what's different from his situation to your situation for him to be in the kingdom but you not to be in the kingdom it doesn't make sense does it but let's keep going on and as we can see, he wrote Ephesus. He had a message to Ephesus and to Smyrna. All of these, all of these churches, that's who John had the message to. So he gave them individualized messages first, and then he walked them through the, uh, the visions or the prophecies. So what was soon to take place? The seven seals being broken was soon to take place. And you find these seven seals in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 31. It's all about the events that led up to the destruction of the temple. 
how do we know this? How, how, how can we draw that conclusion? Well, all you got to do is go back and compare it. So, the 144,000 comes during that first century. And I like how people laugh and stuff because obviously it's funny what I just said. But the person who's laughing and having a great time, uh, and I like this, y'all. When people want to act ignorant, I like letting them act ignorant. So, the person who's laughing, and I'm not going to actually uh, uh, put this video on my site so I can have fun with this. The person is, who's laughing, does this say John, J-O-H-N, John, 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 to the se seven, seven churches, John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Does that say that are in a I'm 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 sorry y'all. If somebody else see that, can y'all give me a like or or a thumbs up? Cause it, it might not be in your Bible. Revelation 1 and 4. Do your Bible say John to the seven churches that are in Asia? Alright, or does it say something else? I need to know. The person that's laughing, could you tell me what your version of the Bible say? Cause I don't see John to the seven churches that are in America. Come on, the person that's laughing. Does your Bible say John to the seven churches that are in Asia? And if it does, could you explain to me who John is writing? Hey, I'm, I'll make it easy for you. I'm going to cover all this. Right there. I got it covered so we don't have to go nowhere above it. How you doing, Mr. Lee? I'm just trying to, uh, you know, I'm an elementary teacher, so I'm going to break it down elementary style. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. So let's use English uh, uh, grammar rules. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Who's writing? John. Who is John writing to? Seven churches. Where are the seven churches located? In Asia. Once again, John. Who is John writing to? Seven churches. Where are the seven churches? In Asia. Okay. Now, what is John writing to seven churches in Asia? Back up here. Things of Jesus Christ about things which must soon take place. When would they take place? Soon take place. When would it take place? Soon take place. When would it take place? Soon take place. When would it take place? Soon take place. So now, if yours don't say right, Kenneth, <laughs> they, they don't understand, so I got to break it to them in elementary style. <laughs> when would it take place? Soon take place. Okay. Who is he writing to? Seven churches in Asia. Seven churches in Asia. When would it take place? Soon. Okay. So now, it says the revelation of Jesus Christ. How much is the revelation of Jesus Christ? The revelation of Jesus Christ is chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, sorry, chapter 5, all the way up to chapter 22. The whole book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ, okay? So, once again, let's reverse, students. When will it take place? Soon. Who is he writing to, students? The seven churches. Where are the seven churches located at, students? In Asia. Okay. So now, let's keep going on. So, what does that mean by default? That means by default, everything in Revelation was related to the seven churches in Asia, including the 144,000. But uh, now I was, I was really wanting to talk about that beast. Because some reason somebody wants the beast to be um, America or Russia or the Ottoman Empire. So let's just read. Let's see what it says here. Um, Revelation, what does it start at? 13? Let's see here. Let's go to Revelation 13. Let's read. Then the dragon took his stand on the sand of the seashore. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea having ten horns and seven heads, and on his horns were ten diadems, which are crowns, and on his heads were his blasphemous names. So now, who is John writing to? Seven churches. Where are the seven churches at? In Asia. So, do you think the seven churches 
in Asia would have understood this beast with ten horns and ten crowns and seven heads. Do you think the seven churches in Asia would have understood that? Of course they would have understood it because they are the audience. He wouldn't have not gave them things they could not understand. They would have understood it. So, you are in America trying to figure out what history was 2,000 years ago. Like you're going to be able, like you was living in Jerusalem during the first century to know, to know whatever political thing was just going on at that time, like you was living in that society. But guess who did know what was going on with Jerusalem and the rest of the world? Who knew that? These set, let me, let's go back and get it. Let's get it again. These seven churches in Asia. They would have understood it. Now, why would the seven churches in Asia have understood what was going on? Because they all was under the Roman Empire. Once again, they all was under the Roman Empire. So, this right here is Rome. They would also have people from Jerusalem in their churches. That's why they could have understood the whole entire revelation. So now, let's read now. The dragon took his stand on the sand of the seashore, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads, and on his horns were ten diadems, and on his head was blasphemous names. And let's look at the description of the beast. And the beast that I saw was like a leopard, its feet were like a bear's, and its mouth was like a lion's mouth. Where? Where did he get that from, I wonder? Where would John D. Revelator get his information about the beast in a vision? Was John the Revelator seeing something different? Was John the Revelator seeing the Ottoman Empire? Was he seeing the American, uh, uh, the American government? Was he seeing Russia? Was he seeing China? Was John the Revelator seeing something new since he he particularly told them this stuff is going to shortly come to pass? That must mean in the first century America came suddenly and somehow we forgot. The Ottoman Empire came in the first century and somehow we forgot. So let's see where John the Revelator actually got that from, the description of the beast. You go to Daniel 7, right? Daniel 7 beasts. He saw four great beasts. Mm, John the Revelator is seeing a beast. Let's see. The first was like a lion. Another beast appeared like a bear. The, another one appeared like a leopard. Let's go back to this one. This one had... Sorry, this beast, hold on, let's get in focus. This beast, let me, let me get my phone in focus. They don't want to focus now. There we go. This beast was like a leopard, a bear, and a lion. Wow, the same type of characteristics as each of the beast in Daniel 7. But why would this one beast have all of the characteristics of these beasts. Well, let's see here. Who sacked Babylon? Medio Persia. That means the Babylonian citizens had to go under the Medio Persian rule, which means Medio Persia and Babylon was now considered one. They was living together. So you have a remnant of the meat uh, the Babylonian Empire inside of Medio Persia. So then what happened? Then you have Greek the Greeks come, or the Greeks come, and then they sack Medio Persia. So now, who's in the territory of the Greeks? Well, the Greeks are now ruling over Medio Persia as well as the Babylonians. So guess who comes sacks the Greeks? The Romans. So now, who's under the Roman Empire now? Well, now under the Roman Empire, you have the Greeks, you have the Medio Persians, and you have the Babylonians. So this one terrible, dreadful beast has 
the characteristic or the, the characteristics of these other beasts because they are all engulfed in it. This is just a political construct, y'all. It's nothing far-fetched. There's <laughs> nothing in the future. Has nothing to do with the Ottoman Empire or the Americas or Russia or China or whatever else you try to make it be in today's time. This is about what they were going through in the first century. This is all of the beasts saw in Daniel. Once again, John the Revelator wasn't saying anything different. So now, let's keep going on. Okay, and the dragon gave uh, its power and its and his throne and a great authority. So now, how else do we know? Once again, this is the beast in, in Revelation, right? But how else do we know? Well, and mental note, Revelation was written under who? Roman Empire, the Roman rule. The book of Revelation was written under the fourth beast. So now, I like this right here. Now, I did already did my research on Ezra. So I already did a video on it. Y'all know that I take Ezra as great literature, but not inspired. But let's show you what uh, Ezra say. Second Ezra 11, the vision of the eagle. Let's go to verse 36. Then I heard a voice saying to me, look in front of you and I consider what you see. I'm uh, sorry, and consider what you see. When I looked, I saw what seemed to be a lion roused from the forest, roaring, and I heard how it uttered a human voice to the eagle and spoke saying, listen, and I will speak to you. The Most High says to you, he's talking to the eagle. Let's see what he tells the eagle. Are you not the one that remains of the four beasts that I had made to reign in my world so that the end of my times might come through them. So now, how could the Most High say that the end of his times was going to come through the four beasts? It was only four beasts in Daniel. So the end of his times was going to come through the four beasts. Let's go over the four beasts again. Babylon, Media Persia, Greeks, Rome. So the, the, the end of the times was going to come through the four beasts. You can't get an Ottoman Empire out of that. You can't get a, a America out of that. You can't get a China or Russia or anything y'all try to do with today's time. So now the end of the times was going to come through the four beasts. So let's keep going. Uh, verse 44 the most high has looked at his times now they have ended and his ages have reached completion therefore you eagle will surely disappear you and your terrifying wings your most evil little wings, your malicious head, head, your most evil talons, and your whole worthless body, so that the whole earth freed from your violence may be refreshed and relieved and may hope for the judgment and mercy of him who made it. So now, look what he said, doing the destruction of the eagle, which was the one that remained from the fourth beast, which was wrong, that's when the time are the ages reach completion so if the time and ages reach completion under the Roman Empire what do you think the beast and revelation about the end of the time or the judgment is about the Roman Empire it reached completion here in Ezra and revelation is talking about the same beast the beast, if Daniel said it was a dreadful beast, the beast in Revelation said it was the beast that had a uh, bear, lion, and, and, and lion, all that stuff. And now in Second Ezra, it said that once again, it's the Roman Empire. Uh, you got to send me that article, but right now Second Ezra is saying that it's the Roman Empire. So, uh, I mean, because it says right here, are you not, 
It says it right here. Are you not the one that remains of the fourth beast that had made terrain in my world? So the one who remained of the four beasts, there was only four beasts. There was uh, Babylon. Who, who sacked Babylon? Media Persia. Who sacked Media Persia? Greek. Who sacked Greek? Rome. So those will be the four political powers that Israel went through before the destruction of the temple. So we have it right there. So this beast can't be different from this beast. If, if the ages were supposed to end during this beast, then how is Revelation about a different beast? Okay, uh, go ahead, Miss Elizabeth. So now, we're just using, uh, and this is just a little bit more logic. So now, let's see what it says. They worshiped the dragon and had given him, uh, the beast was given blasphemous names. Oh, uh, God bless it. And it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them. It was given authority over every tribe and people and language and nation. And all the inhabitants of the earth will worship it. Everyone whose name was not written in the foundation of the world and the book of life in the book of the of life of the lamb that slaughtered that was slaughtered. So now it says everyone whose name is not written in the foundation of the world in the book of life those was going to be the only one who did not worship this beast right this is i mean the power of the bible so now let's go back to daniel because he's pulling straight from daniel so let's go back to daniel Let's go back to Daniel 12. Daniel 12. And at that time, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book Revelations 13 uh where, where was I at yeah, Revelation 13 and 8 well yeah 8 and all the inhib and all the inhabitants of the earth will worship it everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life once again, Revelation 12, everyone who was found written in the book escaped. So now, this is the same book. Revelation 4, I mean 13 and 8, it's the same book in Daniel 12 and 2. So, what do we do to find the event that this is talking about? What event is Daniel 12, 1 talking about? Because because it goes directly with Revelation 13. That same beast in Revelation 13, who those written in the book of the Lamb did not worship, is the same beast that was ruling when they was delivered. So now, guess why they was delivered? Why was these people delivered, found written in this book? Because they did not worship the beast. This is how you put prophecy together. Okay, so now let's find this event under the fourth beast so we can make a more exact connection. We got to use context clues. Here's the context clues right here. There should be a time of anguish such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. So now, let's go to that time of anguish such as has never were never occurred since the nation first existed. Let's go there. You go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24 and Oh, 
let's see here. Uh, what is it at? Round f- 14. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. Let's see. Uh, nation of Rise and the Nation in my name. There's your name. When you see the abomination, no one wants to pray for, the, for their. Right, right here. Matthew 24 and 21. For at that time there would be great suffering, such a such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. Once again, let's read from Daniel 12 again. There shall be there shall be a time of anguish, such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. Matthew 24 and 21 for at that time there will be great suffering such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now no and never will be so Revelation 13 they didn't worship the beast those found written in the book so how was they delivered they hold on let, let me get it back Everyone found written in the book didn't worship the beast, according to Revelation 13. According to Daniel 12, those written in that book was delivered during that time of anguish since there was never a nation. Revelation 24 says, at that time there will be great suffering as there has not been since the beginning of the world until now, nor should there never ever will be. So now, What is Revelation 21 talking about? Revelation 21 is talking about, let's go to verse, I mean, what is Matthew 24, 21 talking about? Let's go to verse 2, Matthew 24 and 2. Then he answered them, ye see all these, do you not? Truly I tell you, not one stone will be left here upon another, all will be thrown down. Matthew 24 2 is talking about the destruction of the temple. Matthew 24 21 is talking about how the events will look leading up to the destruction of the temple. Matt, uh, Daniel 12 uh, 1 and 2 says every one of those found written in the book will be delivered from that destruction. Revelation 13 says that those uh, not uh, sorry. Uh, every one of the names not written from the foundation of the book of the life will be slaughtered. Uh, sorry, hold on, hold on. Let me read it again. And and all the inhabitants of the earth will worship it. Everyone whose name has not been written in the foundation of the world. So, the people who was not written, whose name was not written in the book of the life, they will be delivered from the destruction coming in seventy A.D. So, if Matthew twenty four is talking about the things that occurred under the Roman Empire. Daniel 12 is talking about the four beasts and what will occur at the time of the end. Who do you think the beast is in Revelation 13? The Roman Empire. That's why he had all the attributes of the other beasts before him because Rome conquered all of those other beasts. I mean, this is this is simple, but you have to know scripture and you have to know prophecy in order to get it. Guess who knew scriptures and prophecy? Those seven churches in Asia. <laughs> so, no matter how much someone tried to twist and fight and, and come up with all type of Babylon to Timbuktu books and all type of Ottoman Empire uh, 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 history or or American history talking about really we got the eagle or Ch- China, Russia, uh, Great Britain, any of those people in today's time. No matter how much information they pull, the people in the seven churches of Asia would not have understood it. These things was going to soon take place, not over thousands of years but soon so that's how I just debunked 
who the fourth beast is being the Ottoman Empire all right so hopefully that made sense and if not I just give you the scriptures and let you go through them yourself but I'll talk to you all later on